Minted. Luigi's Mansion was originally released in Japan on September 14th, 2001. Now in 2021, the game is celebrating its 20th anniversary. And for being a game that is two decades old, the fact that we're still playing it, discussing it, and making new discoveries about it to this day is remarkable. Luigi's Mansion stood out from the very beginning. Having a dark game about Luigi for the GameCube's launch title, instead of a bright, colorful Mario game, was a bold move, and one that met critique at the time of its initial release. There was never anything quite like it before, and there will never be anything like it again. The original game has such a unique style, design, and feel, standing out completely from other Mario games and spin-offs, and garnering a huge following over the years. Personally, it's one of my all-time favorite childhood games. So today, in celebration of this unique title's 20th anniversary, we're going to dive into 20 easter eggs, facts, glitches, and various observations about Luigi's Mansion. Hmm. Number 1. Totaka's Song The game's soundtrack was composed by legendary Nintendo composer Kazumi Totaka, who also composed music for Animal Crossing, Yoshi's Story, Wii Sports, and many others. One of his famous trademarks is hiding his own secret 19-note melody known as Totaka's Song. This piece can be found hiding somewhere in nearly every game he's composed for. In Luigi's Mansion, if you go to the training room and wait on the control screen for three and a half minutes, a funky version of this tune will play. Number 2. Egad's Voice Not only did Kazumi Totaka compose the game's soundtrack, but he also voiced Professor Egad himself. <laughs> Taking inspiration from the gibberish the characters in Animal Crossing speak, known as Animalese. Totaka also provided the voice of Yoshi and Captain Olimar from the Pikmin series. Number 3. Weird Music Noises This game is great at creating atmosphere, in both the visuals and the audio. One little detail I always love that adds to the creepiness is these strange, random sounds that could be heard throughout the soundtrack. For example, when you're in the gallery at Egad's lab, a place that is so peaceful that it's kind of unsettling, you can hear the sound of some machine nearby chugging away to the beat. A similar sound can be heard on the control screen. Also, when you're talking to Toad, there is this weird distorted sound that plays at one point in the track. These little details are subtle, but really add to the uneasy atmosphere of the mansion. Number 4. What's the hold up? Here's a little secret you might not have known about. After you head to the mansion's courtyard and climb down the well to discover Mario trapped in a painting, hang out near the outside of the well and listen carefully. You can hear Mario calling for Luigi. Number 5. The Monsters Poster Throughout the mansion, you come across these posters that show a picture of the mansion itself with three monsters in front of it, which appear to be Universal's classic monsters, Frankenstein, Dracula, and the Wolfman. I always found this poster to be odd in a neat way. 
referencing non-Nintendo characters that you never actually see during the game. Number 6. Disney's Haunted Mansion I wouldn't be surprised if Nintendo took inspiration from Disneyland's Haunted Mansion attraction when developing Luigi's Mansion. There are obvious tonal and visual similarities, and even the music can be similar at times. Listen to the similarities between Grim Grinning Ghosts from Disney's Haunted Mansion, and the Luigi's Mansion main theme. Now this definitely is not Nintendo ripping off Disney or anything like that, but it's just neat to see where a possible source of inspiration may have been. Number 7. Japanese text in the English booklet. Remember when video games came with beautiful, full-colored and detailed manuals? Luigi's Mansion was no exception, including a great booklet that includes the game's story, controls, and explanations of the game's mechanics given through various little blurbs from Professor Egad. And, if you go to page 30 in the English manual, you will find that the screenshot of Egad's lab is actually from the Japanese version of the game. Hmm. <laughs> Number 8. Mario 64 and Galaxy Sound Effects Often you will find that many video games, movies, and shows use the same sound effects, pulling from well-known sound libraries. And in Luigi's Mansion, when Luigi collects any of Mario's lost items, the sound that plays is the same sound you'll hear when jumping through a painting or grabbing a power star in Super Mario 64. Also, Luigi's vacuum occasionally makes this sound that was also used for the launch stars in Super Mario Galaxy. Number 9. Luigi's New Mansion After defeating the game's final boss, rescuing Mario, and watching the end credits roll, the mansion disappears without a trace, leaving you with a screen showcasing a brand new mansion. This mansion's look depends on how much money you've earned throughout the game, rank H being the lowest and rank A being the highest. The rank A mansion actually makes a reappearance in a later GameCube title. Mario Kart Double Dash. It can be found in the background of Luigi's Circuit. And in the 3DS title, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, the Rank D Mansion appears in the game's opening as Luigi's canonical home. Also, it looks like Luigi kept his map from the beginning of the first game on his wall to remember his previous adventure. Number 10. Speed Run Skip. It's actually possible to reach the final boss and complete the whole game in 10 minutes. This is made possible by a very difficult glitch that can be performed after the first boss battle with Chauncey. Once returning to the nursery, if you run behind the chest, you can clip through the wall. If done properly, Luigi will go out of bounds and can be very carefully maneuvered to the basement and into the secret altar room. You can then fight King Boo and finish the game incredibly early. There's a video in the description below by SeaWillyHD that explains how to perform this glitch in depth if you want to try it out for yourself. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching up to this point. I have just a quick little commercial break. If you want to skip ahead and get back to the video, just go to the timestamp listed right below. If you like this kind of spooky Halloween theme content, 
I think you'd really like Grimsey. Now Grimsey is an animated short film that I worked on last year. I had a lot of fun making it, it's one of my most ambitious projects to date. So if you enjoy animation and you're really ready for the spooky Halloween season, I definitely think that you would enjoy Grimsey. If you'd like to check it out, just click on that card right up at the top of the screen. And if you'd like to learn how to draw Luigi in the style of Luigi's Mansion, I actually did a drawing video on that. So if you'd like to check that out, just click on the card at the top of the screen. And if you're a fan of the music of Luigi's Mansion, I actually made a little orchestral cover of the music that plays when you're outside the mansion in the courtyard. I'll have a link to that up in the card as well if you want to check it out. Also, comment down below what your childhood memories or experiences with Luigi's Mansion were. I'm going to talk briefly about some of mine at the very end of this video, so stay tuned if you're interested to hear that. But without further ado, let's get back to our 20 facts about Luigi's Mansion. Number 11. Creepy Menu Text Throughout the game's menus, there are little spooky messages that appear when you select various options. For example, when you go to quit the game, Text will appear that reads, You'll be back. <laughs> and we'll be waiting. And when on the file select screen, Welcome to your mansion. Slowly changes to, Welcome to our mansion. And of course, You can erase the files, but not the fear. <laughs> Number 12. Professor Egad is evil? There's a great theory posing several questions about Professor Egad's possibly unethical experimentation throughout the Mario series. Why does he imprison ghosts into paintings in Luigi's Mansion? Why did he give Bowser Jr. a highly destructive tool in Super Mario Sunshine? In all of the Luigi's Mansion games, Egad just sits back in the safety of his own lab while watching Luigi go through real danger and testing all of his gadgets and inventions. What exactly are his motivations? There's a great video on this theory by Swankybox, which I'll leave in the description below if you'd like to check out more. It's a really fascinating theory. Number 13. Merchandise. Since the release of Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon and Luigi's Mansion 3, Nintendo has put out new merchandise surrounding the series. But there's also a few really cool and hard to find pieces of merchandise out there that were released for the original game, including a rare Luigi action figure featuring a detachable vacuum, translucent ghost, and display stand. There's also a Nintendo Power official guide, and a glow-in-the-dark t-shirt that was bundled with a Nintendo Power subscription. Number 14. Ghosts Humming Along As I talked about with the music earlier in this video, part of what makes Luigi's Mansion an immersive experience is the attention to detail, such as Luigi's whistling of the main theme as he walks through bright rooms, or his nervous humming when traversing through dark, dangerous hallways. <laughs> but Luigi may not be the only one humming in the darkness. Head to a dark room, pause the game, and listen closely. You can hear some spooky spirits humming along with you. Number 15. Books in the Study Another interesting bit of attention to detail can be found in the study room. If you go up to one of the bookshelves and press A, you can discover and read different little books, including EGAD's Guide to Ghosts, which gives you various tips on catching ghosts with your vacuum, diaries, which give you hints on how to defeat upcoming boss ghosts, and my personal favorite, a book about gold mice called Darkness is Their Cheese, Written by C. Parmesan. Number 16. Safari Room Hunter Ghost. There's a popular rumor that a boss ghost, known as the Hunter Ghost, was planned for, but ultimately cut from the final game for being too frightening. 
This rumor began in the October 2001 issue of Nintendo Power, on a page showcasing screenshots and information on Luigi's Mansion. One of the screenshots shows an earlier version of the Safari Room with this description. When your goal-busting mission takes you to the Trophy Room, proceed with caution. If you meet up with the ghost of a hunter, he'll want to add Luigi to his collection. However, nowhere in the final game does the hunter ghost described in the magazine appear. This led to much speculation about what the ghost would have been like and why he was cut. Going off the description, perhaps he wanted to put Luigi's head on the wall alongside his prized deer heads, Yikes. which obviously would be scary enough to get him cut. This theory makes sense considering the large amount of cut content for Luigi's Mansion that we do know about, However, there is currently no evidence that the Hunter Ghost ever was planned for the game, and no data form can be found in the game's files. The only lead we have is the little description in the Nintendo Power magazine, so it most likely wasn't meant to be taken seriously, and was more to serve as fuel for the imagination. This, however, isn't the only urban legend we'll cover. Number 17. Luigi's Hanging Shadow after defeating Bulossus in Area 4, a blackout will occur, shrouding the mansion in darkness. Soon after this occurs, a telephone will begin to ring, which is located in the telephone room. If the player answers the phone in the middle, and waits for a few moments, lightning will strike, and the light cast into the room reveals Luigi's shadow, appearing to be hanging from a pole. This frightening discovery led many to theorize that Luigi has hanged himself and was discussed all over the internet. Several dark theories were devised, including the mansion being a purgatory for Luigi after he's died, Luigi himself being a ghost, or even King Boo signaling to Luigi his fate if he fails to rescue Mario. However, the truth about this shadow is that it's not an intentional dark secret at all. It's actually a glitch caused by the game's camera. Because the camera is slightly lower when answering the phone, Luigi's shadow is projected slightly higher. Also, what looks to be Luigi's arm is actually the hose of the vacuum. Plus, this same glitch can also be replicated elsewhere, such as while speaking to Toad or Professor Egad over the Game Boy Horror. Also, this glitch is not present in the Nintendo 3DS remake of the game, making it less likely to be intentional. Nevertheless, it was one of the biggest mysteries surrounding the game, and the legend still prevails to this day. Number 18. Early Development The making of Luigi's Mansion is a fascinating story. Development on the game began in the late 90s, right alongside the Nintendo GameCube. One of the main goals of the game was to showcase the power and capabilities of this new console. The idea for Luigi's Mansion initially centered around the concept of exploring an enclosed, Japanese-style ninja house or a dollhouse. The game was to star Mario, and the player would enter and unlock new rooms, with similar elements to the dungeons in The Legend of Zelda. However, after experimenting with dynamic lighting and shadows now capable with the GameCube's hardware, they decided to make the game much visually darker and opted to go for an American-style haunted mansion. Now, with a spookier location, a more cowardly character was needed as the game's protagonist. And so, Luigi was chosen over Mario. Perhaps inspired by the film Ghostbusters, a vacuum was chosen as the game's main mechanic, which utilized the GameCube's dual control sticks. And from there, Luigi's Mansion was born. Number 19. Beta Trailer the beta version of Luigi's Mansion is another big mystery about this game. As I talked about with the Hunter Ghost, there are many legends about what the earlier version of Luigi's Mansion was going to be like. One of the best sources to actually see said early version is the trailer showcased at Space World 2000. Now we're going to take a quick glance at our next game. It's the next in the Mario series! <laughs> It's a fascinating watch because not only do you see several early elements that ultimately got cut, such as unused cutscenes, a mysterious timer at the bottom of the screen, and different designs for the ghosts and different music, but you can also hear people's reactions to seeing this game for the very first time. 
and their amazement at the graphical effects showcased throughout the game. Now if you uh, shine the light on the two-way... <laughs> but perhaps the most memorable thing about this trailer is how it ends. Number 20. Beta Game Over. After showcasing various clips of gameplay, the trailer ends with this creepy cutscene. When this trailer first surfaced on YouTube, many were very creeped out by the appearance of this gloomy, zombie-like Luigi. This trailer ending became known as the Beta Game Over screen, along with a popular theory that in the original version of the game, if you failed to save Mario, Luigi would become eternally depressed, subjected to roam the mansion forever, his brother forever gone. Now, I find that theory to be interesting, and many held it to have some substantial truth to it, but here's the thing, there's no evidence that this was actually a game over screen. I'm not even sure where that idea originated from. The only thing close to it is an image of the same sad version of Luigi that was originally going to be used for achieving the lowest rank in the game. So I think that all this infamous cutscene really is, is a creepy ending to the trailer to get people excited for the game. But regardless, I will say, that depressed Luigi face will continue to haunt our nightmares. And those are 20 miscellaneous facts about Luigi's Mansion. If you stuck around this long, thank you so much for watching this video, and a big thank you to everybody out there who has been supporting me, checking out my channel, engaging with my content. I really appreciate it as always. I know this video was perhaps long anticipated by some of you, so thank you very much for your patience. This video really is kind of my love letter to Luigi's Mansion. As I said in the intro to this video, Luigi's Mansion is one of my all-time favorite childhood games. I had such a really special experience playing it when I was a kid, I remember um, a friend of ours brought over a bunch of old GameCube games and I picked up this one and I said, oh, what's this? This looks kind of interesting. And lo and behold, it was Luigi's Mansion. And I remember uh, that night reading the game's manual and just really getting immersed in the story and what the game looked like and the different features of the game. And I was really excited to play it the next day. I remember getting up the next morning and going down to our kind of spooky basement, turning on this little old-fashioned CRT TV, uh, seeing that classic GameCube intro pop up and playing Luigi's Mansion and experiencing that game. And it was just really special, I was kind of scared of it a little bit when I was little, but something about it always brought me back. I, I really wanted to find Mario. I really wanted to unlock the secrets of the mansion. It kept me coming back even if I was a little bit afraid sometimes. And it was just a really special experience. Let me know down in the comments below if you guys have had special memories with this game growing up as well. I know many of you out there have. I certainly would love to hear from you guys. So here's to 20 years of Luigi's Mansion. What a special game. I am as old as this game now. I really feel old. <laughs> Thank you guys again so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.